to the Zoom service, which will occur at 10.30 Sunday morning, and will include communion. Be sure to have your crackers and bread, wine and juice handy for that. This evening, the youth will gather outside at Jake and Leah's from 7 to 8.30 for scripture and snack. You'll also see in your bulletin, there's an announcement about the hive of creativity. So we're celebrating creativity this month and want to offer a way for everyone to share in that. As we begin our worship, please join me for the opening prayer. Eternal God, your spirit moved on the waters and there was light your first creation. Your spirit moved on the water of our baptism, and again, there was light in our souls and hearts. Let your holy light shine on us today as we remember your creation and our special part in it. Amen. In your bulletin, you'll find the words for Christ is alive. Mary and Chris will be joining with their instruments. Thank you. 
Bishops will be offering a peace candle meditation. I am a writer and a musician, and uh, I don't know about others who enjoy creative pursuits like writing and playing music, but in the last, let's say, three months, I found it <laughs> very difficult to find the energy and time and focus uh, to write with joy or to play music with freedom. Um, I've had to write uh, had deadlines for academic essays. I've had to write, um, and that's <laughs> been very difficult at times um, to meet those deadlines. Um, and especially probably in the last two weeks, I found that some of the questions I have about my own creativity are uh, kind of more of a so what. Um, you know, writing another academic essay or working on my drumming. <laughs> um, so what in light of uh, police brutality and anti-black racism and so forth? Um, and, you know, not just a, a kind of so what of, well, who cares at all, but so what, can I do anything to help with my creativity? Can my passions be channeled in a way um, to serve the cause of justice, the cause of peace in our world? And that can be very confusing. Again, this is something I imagine many others uh, are experiencing as well with the proliferation, this incredible amount of noise on social media, the, the various events going on, um, an ur urgent sense of a need to be involved, to speak up, to speak out, um, but also to do more than just speak, to, to be active. Um, and it's easy to feel like in the midst of so many options and, and so much emotion that my own creative political action is um, is also kind of dampened uh, and my, my ability to speak out and to act out is, is challenged. Uh, we have a tradition as Mennonites and as Christians of uh, centering our action and our words on the Holy Spirit and letting our action and words come from the flow of the Holy Spirit. And, the Mennonite tradition, sometimes the German word Gelassenheit is used here, uh, which roughly means in German something like letting go-ness or yieldedness. Uh, that tradition can sometimes be used as an excuse to not do anything, um, or worse, but it can also be a way of saying that the only way I'm going to really do anything is it's going to be of use. The only way my creativity is actually going to be able to serve the cause of what God is doing in the world. And if I take a moment and I pause and I let go of my anxieties about all the different ways I could and should be getting involved, if I let go of my fears about doing the wrong thing, if I let go of my need to make things come out right, to appear to be doing the right thing, and I say, yes, Holy Spirit. If I hear the Holy Spirit say to me, like the Spirit, like the Father said through the Spirit to Jesus, you are my beloved child. Because in the New Testament, it's, it's only as we get caught up in the Spirit, as we yield to the Spirit and hear the Spirit calling us God's children, that are we empowered to act. Are we empowered to be creative, to speak, to act in, in ways that creatively uh, align with God's purposes and plans in the world? So my prayer for us as we light the peace candle today is that we would pause and let go, again, not as a, an alternative to speaking up, speaking out, acting up and out, uh, but as a way of letting go of that which is hindering us, letting go of that which is um, hindering our creativity so that we might be uh, illuminated, that the Spirit might breathe in us, uh, that we might breathe in the world fully. So please join me in reciting the litany that you'll find in your bulletin.
as I light the candle. God of peace, Christ of peace, Spirit of peace, you are calling us to be peacemakers. Today we light this candle as a reminder of our call. Amen. For our prayer of confession and reconciliation, I'll be reading from Sing the Journey number 140. This was a prayer originally written by John, Pope John Paul II, and I've made a few small changes. I'll indicate to you when it's time to join me with the portion in your bulletin. Let's pray. To you, creator of nature and humanity, of truth and beauty. I pray, hear my voice, for it is the voice of the victims of all wars and violence among individuals and nations. Hear my voice, for it is the voice of all children who suffer and who will suffer when people put their faith in weapons, power, and war. Hear my voice when I beg you to instill into the hearts of all human beings the vision of peace, the strength of justice, and the joy of fellowship. Hear my voice, for I speak for the multitudes in every country and in every period of history who do not want conflict and are ready to walk the road of peace. Hear my voice and grant insight and strength so that we may always respond to hatred with love, to injustice with total dedication to justice, to need with the sharing of self, to conflict with peace. O oh God, hear my voice and grant to the world your everlasting peace. Amen. For our scripture reading today, Jake and I will be reading Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, through chapter 2, verse 3, and I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Jake will be doing the Spanish translation. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. En español leo del libro de Génesis, 
capítulo 1, versículo 26, hasta capítulo 2, versículo 3. Dice así sobre la creación. Y dijo Dios, hagamos al ser humano a nuestra imagen y semejanza, que tenga dominio sobre los peces del mar y sobre las aves del cielo, sobre los animales domésticos, sobre los animales salvajes y sobre todos los reptiles que se arrastran por el suelo. Y Dios creó al ser humano a su imagen, lo creó a imagen de Dios, hombre y mujer los creó, y los bendijo con esas palabras. Sean fructíferos y multiplíquense, llenen la tierra y sometenla. Dominen a los peces del mar y a las aves del cielo y a todos los reptiles que se arrastran por el suelo. También les dijo, yo les doy la tierra, todas las plantas que producen semilla y todos los árboles que dan fruto con semilla. Todo esto les servirá de alimento y doy la hierba verde como alimento a todas las fieras de la tierra a todas las aves del cielo y a todos los seres vivientes que se arrastran por la tierra. Y así sucedió. Dios miró todo lo que había hecho y consideró que era muy bueno. Y vino la noche y llegó la mañana y ese fue el sexto día. Así quedaron terminados los cielos y la tierra y todo lo que hay en ellos. Al llegar el séptimo día, Dios descansó porque había terminado la obra que había emprendido. Dios bendijo el séptimo día y lo santificó, porque en ese día descansó de toda su obra creadora. La palabra de Dios. Gracias. Last week was Pentecost, and we began a new worship series on bursting with creativity. And we saw God's creativity working through the disciples and communicating to the crowd that gathered across cultures and language they could understand. Today, we're going to see God's creativity in creation and the call to be co-creators, ones who creatively point toward the creator in, in a variety of ways. And again, we want to ask, how do we do this in a time of pandemic and in a time of national crisis and when there seems to be possibly a rightness or a readiness to address one of the, perhaps the most fundamental sin of this country, the USA, where most of us listening, are, where most of us listening live, racism, especially anti-black racism. And I want to lift out three things from Genesis 1 and 2 about being co-creators with God. First, I want to refer to Genesis 1.26. God creates humankind, it says, in our image, and then gives them, the uh, New Revised Standard Version trans translates, dominion over the earth's well-being. But I've also seen it translated and heard it translated as, let us make them stewards. And I particularly like the way the message translated, which says, let us make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible. So first, we are called to be co-creators with God, reflecting God's nature by being creatively responsible for the earth, its creatures, and our fellow human beings. This week, how are we taking creative responsibility in our society as co-creators. I have felt this question strongly this past week, and I found myself finding, trying to find some ways to respond and finding some. First of all, in some of my social media communications, to give room to people of color to, to state and use, have, have their voice and use their voice. And then to find some other things that I can do, I've joined a small online group that is going to meet for a while to work at the piece on 75 things white people can do to alleviate racism. And though you certainly don't have to be white to do many of them. 
Trish Habeger found a more comprehensive piece that went out as a Google document to a people associated with Hively this week called Justice in June. Things you can do for justice, especially racial justice, with just 10 or 25 or 45 minutes a day. This past Friday night, I also got to participate in the first of what will likely be a mul multiple local conversations sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce in Elkhart on where we go as a community from here in healing race relations. And basically, through about 12 groups that were meeting and socially distanced and with about eight people in each group, we said, first of all, we need to find ways to socialize with each other across race and culture with intentional conversation. And that we want to work hard on local state legislators, le le <laughs> excuse me, legislators to get a hate crime bill passed in Indiana. And third, that we will work with the city and the police department on policy and training, and especially the establishment of a Citizen Advisory and Accountability Council. So being a co-creator with God means taking responsibility for creation and for our fellow human beings created in God's image. Second, I want to note Genesis 1.31. God looked over everything he'd made, and indeed it was very, very good. Sin, the turning away from God and love by humans individually and collectively, mars that goodness, but underneath there is still an undergirding goodness in creation. Being co-creators with God means looking for that underlying goodness and doing things that put us in touch with it. It means finding the good in others. It means what Mr. Rogers used to talk about when he said, when bad things happen, look for the helpers and be one and find things to do that physically put us in touch with creation and other human beings. A little bit later, I will describe a new group that is, is, has formed or is forming here at Hively called the Eighth Day Group. But first, I want to share a brief paragraph from Leroy Sainer, who is part of that group, and responded when prompted with this. Tell me about a time you felt you were a co-creator with God or when you experience God in creation in a powerful way. And Leroy wrote this, every time I take a piece of wood cut from a tree and create a wooden bowl or an other piece of art, I am co-creating with God. The design and the colors of the wood are created by God and always turn out to be a surprise. The shape of the project may be my creation, but the raw materials, is made by our, by our creator God. That's an example of being co-creator in doing something creative that puts you in touch with the underlying goodness of God's creation. Finally, from Genesis 2-3, I want to point to the seventh day of creation, being used as a day of rest and renewal, even by God. In Christian spirituality tradition, we are co-creators with God when we use the seventh day like God did to rest and reflect, even in a small sense, dying to ourselves. So it sets us up for the eighth day of creation, the day of new life, the day of new life and light, of new beginnings, the day of resurrection. Even in the midst of pandemic and of a time when being activist is important, make sure you also take time for rest and contemplation and reflection, this little dying, so that the eighth day of creativity and new beginnings may take place in you and in us. When I felt overwhelmed about a week ago by all that was going on in our society, it was important for me to take a day to just reflect more and think about the opportunities for being active and creative so that I could figure out what was mine to take up. And this past week has come to feel more like the eighth day as I feel like I've begun to find a few of those ways that feel like I can do and not be overwhelmed, but also be active and involved. But I also know I will need to keep that cycle going, still periodically taking that day of rest. Eighth day, the eighth day group, is the name of a group that only got to meet once or twice before the stay at home orders started but it is really made up of folks who wanted to think about 
how they were called in their creative work as visual and word artists on how to be co-creators. So first we're going to hear from Trish Habeyer and then have to hear a little longer reflection from Tyler Clausen. Psalm 139 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. My mother started knitting when she was pregnant with me. At one point, my dad said to her, I'll be glad when you get that blanket done so we can have a conversation again. Now I too have become a knitter, and I often feel close to God when I'm knitting. I enjoy the feel of the yarn going through my fingers. Since I tend to use mostly natural fibers, it gives me the opportunity to think about and give thanks for the animal or plant that provided it. I think about sheep a lot. I know from experience working with llama, sheep, goats, horses, and dogs, that it's almost impossible to manhandle them into doing something they don't want to do. I can coax, however, and gently guide, and often the animal will follow my directions. It's the same with fiber. Strangle it and handle it roughly, and you often get a misshapen, stiff product. Handle it with care, and it will drape, warm, and comfort. There's also a lot of grace in knitting. Mistakes are inevitable, but you can choose how to deal with them. Sometimes it means starting over and over and over. It can feel like 70 times seven sometimes. Or occasionally what you thought was a flaw actually turns into a design element. It was meant to be there all along and only enhances the finished product. Maybe it's there to remind us of how our imperfection can be made perfect. Knitting gives me the opportunity to live in the moment. In Alaska, we learned that totem poles designed to commemorate a person or event were carved and painted beautifully. They were not, however, meant to last forever. They're allowed to decay, reminding the observer that things and life is finite while still leaving us with precious memories. I don't very often knit something that I think of as an heirloom, preferring that my creations be used and enjoyed until they no longer serve. I'm not generally a patient person. I do find, however, that I can be very patient with my knitting. I'm willing to untangle a skein of yarn for hours if necessary in order to make the best use of what I have. Starting over and reworking may make me sigh and worry but working toward a better end result generally makes it worthwhile. I'm sure God has and continues to sigh over me plenty. As I prepared this message, I wondered what I could say about creativity that didn't seem silly or flippant. But I believe that if we are going to solve the problems of the pandemic and heal our nation from the terrible sins of racism and violence, it is going to take every bit of spiritual creativity that we have. We will need our best creative spiritual practices to do the work ahead of us. The first creative activity in this ancient story in Genesis is God's spirit moving. God is brooding like a bird, according to the message. Or, the King James says, God's spirit moved over the face of the waters. Or, a wind from God. That's the NRSV. God was moving, creating, before God's creation activities. The formless void, the primordial chaos, 
empty canvas of God's creation was the scene of movement, of thought, by the Creator. God's touch was on the waters. The creation story begins. God spins or pushes and pulls, and the formless takes shape. The waters separate from the firmament. Flowering, leafing, fruiting plants begin to grow. Lights are hung in the black velvet of the night, day and night. Great sea monsters, tiny birds, fluttering snakes, hunting cats and wolves, and the skittish beasts upon which they feed. And finally, humankind created in the likeness of creating God. As I read this text, I think about there is order in the creation. If I believe in a creating God who can create at whim and will, there is no reason to believe that God needs to do anything in an order that I am able to understand. And yet, there is order here in God's work. We get a glimpse into God's creative working. God wants us to have at least a little understanding of the holy creative activity. Secondly, there's mystery in God's work. It may be that God shows a certain order in these chapters of Genesis, but there is also plenty of mystery. There is so much we can only guess at. Our imaginations can be awakened by questions. Thirdly, God approves of his work. Six times God approves, God blesses, and says, it is good. Verse 31 says, God saw everything that God made, and indeed it was very good. We, God's children, are part of that goodness. Fourth, in the end, God rests. The work is over, and the blessing of holy rest follows. God wants us to know that rest, just as work, is holy. I believe that this text shows us God's desire to create. And I believe that as humankind is made in God's image, we have the same desire woven into ourselves. It is part of the God image we all carry within us. We need to create, explore our vision and our craft. I don't think it matters if you work in a field that is traditionally thought of as creative or not. We all have creativity woven into the fiber of our being. Every creative person has those times when sitting at their writing table or in front of a quilt stretcher or standing at a lathe, you know that you have a chance to get your butt kicked by failure. You have a chance to see your hard work disappear into the trash can. Because you have an idea, a thought, an idea for something that you've never tried before. Sometimes it's a little more than a hope for something wonderful. This idea may be something that may show a bit of the glory of God. It is something that will help you see a little more clearly the wonder and beauty of the creative God. It may be something that may show the world that same wonder and beauty. This is an idea that could result in a very special piece of work. But this idea you have is going to challenge you. This idea is going to push you to be more courageous and a little bolder than you may be comfortable with. Your vision and thinking will have to be focused and attentive your skills will be, need to be really good because this idea is for a really powerful, beautiful, and meaningful creative thing. The words inside you have no form. The quilt is simply a chaotic pile of fabric you cannot yet wrap around you. The block of wood on the lathe is rough, splintery, and half covered in bark. But you know that this work could be really really good. You will need all your skills, hard work, and creative thought to get the poem finished, the quilt finished, or the wood finished. But sometimes, sometimes everything comes together. All the work 
the skill, hope, and vision. Vision becomes clear. Physical skills match the dream. Effort creates quality. And in those moments, I feel closest to God in creating. I feel a power I can only sense at other times. My creative vision is sharper. My fingers have the skill needed. My heart leads and the rest follows. And, and I can feel God working with my mind, my heart. I can feel God working through my eyes and my hands. I see God revealed through the wood, the shape, the figure of the grain of the wood, the surprise in grain patterns, colors, and contrast. I know these times as gifts. I am humbled and maybe lessened, made a little smaller in the shadow of the living, loving God. But I am also more fully alive within the creative heart of God. I am in God's presence in a way that is known only to people who spend their energy following after the heart of God. These times of closeness to God's presence cannot be summoned, only received. Our God is not a lap dog, a dog who comes when called. Musician Roseanne Cash says she sometimes wishes she had a baseball glove to catch divine inspiration when it comes her way. She never knows when a song will arrive, and sometimes the song arrives all at once in a terrible rush. She says it is especially trying, difficult trying to write down the song as she drives. But she knows that if she does not catch that song, it's gone. I do believe that there are practices we can have that will help keep our hearts open to God's touch. And I offer this small toolkit for keeping our lives open to God's creative touch to everyone, not just people who think of themselves as creative. First of all, treat your work as a holy and important thing. Give your work the time and energy it needs and deserves. Practice regularly. Your creative work, together with the Spirit of God, is a reflection of an important part of the image of God within you. Second, believe that your creative place is a place of holy work. You are on sacred ground. Treat that place with the respect and honor it deserves. Keep it as clean or messy as you need. Find small or large elements of beauty to place in your space. Thirdly, believe that the holy creative work you do is part of your spiritual life. Offer your work to God, to God's world, as you would any other offering to God. Give generously from your work. Give away your creations. Mentor, teach, write of your work. Share the unique gift that you are to the world. Believe as you honor God through your creative work, God will honor your life with God's presence in it. You are worthy of God's love and guidance. This is true in all of your living. Lastly, know when to rest. Know when you are done and let go. Pull up your feet. Hold yourself in God's presence a little longer and breathe. Creating within the presence of God is a great gift to ourselves and to God's community. We are blessed and we are a blessing to the world as we honor God's creating within the world, within ourselves. May our lives honor this loving, creative God. I'm going to read.
read the words for verses one and three as God stretched the spangled heavens. And then Beth will play. The words are in your bulletin. God, who stretched the spangled heavens infinite in time and place, flung the suns in burning radiance through the silent fields of space, we, your children, in your likeness, share inventive powers with you. Great creator, still creating, show us what we yet may do. As each far horizon beckons, may it challenge us anew, children of creative purpose, serving others, honoring you. May our dreams prove, prove rich with promise, each endeavor well begun. Great creator, give us guidance till our goals and yours are one. God of justice, mercy, and wholeness. Our hearts ache. We are tired of isolation. We are tired of racism in our country. Move over us and in us. Hover over us. Call us to be who you created us to be. Creatively responsible. Creatively looking for the underlying goodness of your creation taking time to rest and reflect so that we can act out of creativeness. Move among us in new ways. Blow your wind of creativity across us and across our land. We pray for repentance and newness in our relations across races. We pray for your mercy to heal hearts and bodies. We pray to be put in touch with your creative love that is built into us, into each of us, and that we will use the tools that you give us. We pray this through Jesus Christ, who creatively overcame oppression and violence in the resurrection. Amen. Join us as we sing Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. Either follow along or sing along at home.
receive this benediction. The world has much work to do. It is in need of who you are, what your gifts are. Grab your toolbox, your work gloves, some comfortable work shoes, and get out.